Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to define some of the terms that I tend to use on a daily basis. We're going to talk about immunity. We're going to spend time defining immunity and what it is. Moving forward, we're going to go through a three-part series on the innate immune system, the adaptive immune system, and antigen presentation. How do the cells see what's foreign and present it to cells so that way you can fight these infections and get rid of them. We're gonna spend some time discussing that and I hope you guys continue to learn how your immune system functions and how it protects you from getting disease. innate immune system what we're referring to is the natural immune system so it's the immune system that's first on the scene when your body is presented with a pathogen of any kind and sometimes your body reacts to itself so what does that mean well first of all we got to define what inflammation is inflammation is the recruitment of white blood cells to certain areas of the body that also causes the production of proteins and cytokines and chemokines that lead to more cellular recruitment and eventually healing and clearing of an infection. Barriers matter. So skin is part of the innate immune system, okay? Lining of your organs are part of the innate immune system. In your lung, you have surfactant A and surfactant D are involved in immunity. But now let's get into the cells of the innate immune system. The first type of white blood cell that's involved in innate immunity is the neutrophil. The neutrophil is a granulocyte, it's a phagocyte. It's a type of white blood cell that's going to eat or engulf bacteria, fungi, or cells that are infected by viruses. And the way that it does that is it has special enzymes within its structure that lead to its ability to engulf cells. It's also the most abundant white blood cell in your bloodstream. So neutrophils are very important in innate immunity as they're first on the scene. The second cell that's involved is the macrophage. A macrophage is another type of phagocyte. Macrophages also secrete certain cytokines that lead to the cellular recruitment of other types of white blood cells. And I'm gonna talk about three cells together because these three cells are essentially brothers or sisters or cousins. They're very, very close in structure. The cells are called the basophil, the mast cell, and the eosinophil. The basophil, mast cell, and eosinophils are cells that are full of these little granules. What they are, are a collection of inflammatory mediators. So when IgE binds to the cell membrane, you get release of these granules. They help get the immune system revved up. The mast cell. Now mast cells like to stay in tissue. Well, basophils and eosinophils are more likely to be in that bloodstream, and we've seen eosinophils make their presence felt in the lung, causing symptoms of asthma. They can also make themselves present in the esophagus, causing a pathology called eosinophilic esophagitis. Another type of cell that's involved in innate immunity is called the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell will sit right under the epithelial layer it will be able to communicate based on what the innate immune system has just encountered. Now, there are always different proteins that associate themselves with the innate immune system. And by protein, I mean a collection of amino acids, which leads to the structure of a molecule that can also participate in the inflammatory response. One of those proteins is called the complement system. The complement system will bind to certain pathogens, and it's almost like a Nerf gun. You know when you were a kid and you were playing with Nerf and you would hit your little brother or your little sister with those little Nerf balls? That's complement. And eventually these pathogens get recognized by other types of cells and it's gonna upregulate that inflammatory response. And so when you look at the innate immune system, there are many different types of white blood cells and types of protein that allow it to function properly, to participate in the initial inflammatory process 
And then you want this system to be able to communicate with other cells to recruit the more specific type of the immune system to the area so we can best deal with foreign pathogens. Thanks for joining today's episode. I really appreciate you guys learning about that innate immune system. I hope you get a better understanding of how your body responds to the presence of foreign substances like bacteria, viruses, and fungus. What we're gonna learn next week is how the body responds to specific substances, what type of bacteria it is, what type of virus it is, and how the cells involved, B cells and T cells, function and end up presenting antigen to activate that inflammatory response specifically. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. Hit that subscription button, hit that notification button, as my buddy Nick always says, and please join us soon. Thanks again. Arming you with information, I'll meet you at the Medicine Deconstructed store next week for some more ammunition. Thanks for joining.